What else can cause the area of the throat to be constricted? Well, believe it or not, the breathing mechanism, how we inhale, how we exhale. Let's talk about the inhalation. I'd like to give you an overview of what actually goes on as you breathe. When you open your mouth, if there's no air in your lungs, which sit up here, if there's no air in your lungs, air will flow into your lungs if, if the area of the throat is relaxed because there's more pressure on the outside of the body and than the inside of the body, the body seeks to equalize that pressure. So you simply open your mouth and allow air to rush into the lungs. Now the lungs sit up here, and what you want to do as the air comes into the lungs is allow the rib cage to expand so there will be more room for the lung to expand. The rib cage is way up here in the back, way up here, not down here at your waist, way up here. So you inhale and expand the rib cage. Now you should feel your rib cage going this way and as you expand the rib cage you should also feel this angle and your hand go like that. And that's the expansion of the rib cage. Now what happens next? Underneath the ribs sits the diaphragm. There are three kinds of muscles in the body. Voluntary, involuntary, and trainable. The diaphragm is actually an involuntary muscle. What is a voluntary muscle? Well, that's a voluntary muscle, and so is that. What is an involuntary muscle? Well, maybe your heart. What is a trainable muscle? Well, there are many trainable muscles. I've trained my tongue, actually, to, to go wide and narrow like this. It's not going in and out, it's doing this. We'll talk about that later as we get into how to tongue. But I've trained one muscle in the front of my tongue to do that. It's not how I tongue, but I can do it. That's a trainable muscle. The diaphragm itself is an involuntary muscle, and here's what happens with the diaphragm. As the lungs expand, the lungs push the diaphragm down. Now, the diaphragm looks something like this. It's attached to the floating, one of the floating ribs at the bottom, and as the lungs expand, the lungs cause the diaphragm to move down. So this is the motion. Now why does the diaphragm move down? Once again, because the lungs are filling with air and the lungs push the diaphragm down. Thus, the term diaphragmatic breathing is correct. The term use your diaphragm is misleading. Now, underneath the diaphragm, sit basically in this kind of shape uh, all your inner organs. Thus, as the, as the diaphragm moves down, the diaphragm pushes these inner organs down, which first causes the stomach wall to expand, and then as, that, as it moves down more, the lower abdomen to expand. But the stomach wall and the lower abdomen should not be hard or tight, just allowed to expand. Now, where is the air going when you inhale? The air is in your lungs. You do not put air down here in your stomach. That's not what's going on. Now, this is an overview of the inhalation. Basically, it's very simple. You expand the rib cage and inhale, and that's all you have to do. There is a lot of confusion with the subject, and for many years of my career, I breathed uh, a different way. I was taught to fill up from the bottom, like a Coke bottle filling up from the bottom. Many, many teachers teach this way and still do, and I think here's where it comes from. Uh, Well-meaning teachers don't want young students to inhale and, and move their shoulders like this, because that is indeed a shallow breath. So they've gone the other extreme and said, put the air down here. Now, what's wrong with trying to put the air down here? Well, if you really put the air or try to put the air down here, which you're really not doing, it's in your lungs, you will cause tension in the area of the throat, and I'll demonstrate this to you now. 
put your, make a fist, put it right here, just above your belly button. Now inhale, take the other hand and put it all over the area of the throat, okay? Now inhale and push the stomach out. Now count from one to 10. Count one, two, three, four. Can you hear how my voice just went up? You will note as you feel your throat with this hand that the area of the throat is constricted because you are pushing out from here. And the harder you push, the more the area of the throat will constrict. We'll get to that in a minute as we talk about the exhalation. So you don't push this out and you don't push out the lower abdomen. You just allow it to expand. The air is going into the lungs. That's really all there is to it. The inhalation and your eyes will get bigger as mine are now because that's how you feel. You can actually get high on air. It's a great feeling. Try it. That is the inhalation. If you've been breathing the other way for years and years, those of you that are advanced players, you will find that when you breathe this way, when you inhale this way, you will have between one-third and 50% more air. Give it a shot. Feels great. That is the inhalation. It is that simple. Again, if you push out the stomach, or if you try to put the air down in the stomach or lower abdomen, you will constrict the area of the throat. And I'm going to say this once again, the area of the throat should be relaxed and allowed to change. Now, that takes care of the inhalation. Let's, take, let's talk about the exhalation. The French have a saying, and Joel Art taught me this, souffle ce n'est pas jouer, le meilleur est d'attendre. To force, to blow is not to play. The best thing you can do is to wait, or even more, even freely, more freely translated, to force the air is not to play music. The best thing in the world you can do is to allow the air to flow. Now, this whole school of playing is about staying out of your own way and allowing the sound. Remember the sound, sound from the motor area, the, the sound from the tone imagination? The, allowing the sound to occur. So how do you exhale? Well, voice scientists have dissected cadavers to try to find out exactly what is happening with the muscles in the breathing mechanism. It's not exactly clear what we do know is there are many sets of muscles which, which work together simultaneously at the same time. The muscles of the stomach wall, the muscles of the lower abdomen, the intercostal muscles. Basically, all you have to do when you play the saxophone is to listen and allow the air to flow. If you simply listen, the motor area of the brain will take the tone imagination and tell the various breathing muscles what to do automatically and subconsciously. Let's see what happens when you consciously push with these muscles. So once again, put your left hand all over the area of the throat. At the same time, make a fist with your right hand. Put it on your stomach just above the belly button. Now, with the left hand on the area of the throat and the fist here above the belly button, I would like you to count from one to 10 and, uh, and observe what you feel. And as you count, I want you to push harder and harder on the stomach wall with your fist and push back with your stomach and see what you feel in the area of the throat. One, do it with me. One, two, push harder. Three, four, five, I'm through. I can't even count anymore. As you push from here, this tightens. What's happening? Well, you have the trachea, that's the windpipe here. Of course, you have the lungs, and out of the lungs come two two-lane highways of air, which merge into a one-lane highway of air, the trachea, okay? On top of the trachea, you have the glottis and the epiglottis, which when you cough and you look in the mirror, that little thing that moves, that's your epiglottis. When you push like that with the area of the stomach and the stomach muscles, Either the glottis closes or the epiglottis closes, and it becomes harder to play. Why? Because the area of the throat, glottis, epiglottis, larynx, pharynx, trachea, all those parts of the throat are tense because you're pushing from here. 
So how do you play? You simply listen and allow the motor area of the brain to take the tone imagination and send the commands to the various parts of your body which respond automatically and subconsciously, like this. That's all there is to it. You just hear what you want to hear and it'll come out of the horn. Tone imagination.